Kayla Brees. Yeah, those are my two cats. The little guy is the new one, Wolfgang, and the big guy is Ludwig. I recently had been thinking about painting my place. Um, but got stuck, I guess, on which colors I thought were appropriate and which ones I actually wanted. So I took out a couple of books on the topic and I'd like to share now um, some of my opinions on color theory. Uh, I'm going to speak aloud, uh, which I think is going to help me make a decision better. So bear with me. Color theory was born from the concepts of the three primary colors. These colors are basically understood as red, green, and blue. Now what makes them primary is that they can be combined to create all the colors of the rainbow. But strangely there's also a variant group of primary colors. And those are magenta, yellow, and cyan. The first group exhibits the behavior of light mixtures and combines fully to create white. The second group exhibits the behavior of paint pigment and combines fully to create black. Color contrasts are best understood through three key attributes, lightness, saturation, and hue. What's really crazy though about the primary colors is that they actually do not mix and cannot mix to make all colors. Any primary colors of light, paint, or ink can mix only a limited range of colors, which we call a gamut. And they always contain fewer colors than the full range of colors the human eye can perceive. We can go deeper into this topic, but I'm trying to tie into the painting of my house. So, Colors can be described as either warm or cool in tone. This isn't as scientific as colorimetry, but it's been an important piece of color theory since about the 18th century. Warm colors are often said to be the hues from red and yellow. Cool colors are often the hues from blue and green. The distinction is based on the observed contrast in landscape light between the warm colors associated with daylight or sunset and the cool colors associated with a gray or uh, an overcast. Warm colors are said to advance or appear more active, while cool colors tend to recede. Warm colors are said to arouse and stimulate the viewer, while cool colors calm and relax. The psychology of colors and what they symbolize has become the major theme for designers and artists of all levels. When most people today refer to color theory, they are referring to the concealed impressions of color. Basically, color theorists have attempted to assign colors to specific human emotions. Once again, however, it's all relative. These specific emotions conjured up by the colors vary by each culture and each individual. I'll run through my quick personal positions of each color. White equals purity. Black equals mystery. Red, passion. Blue, peace. Green, life. Yellow, intelligence. Purple, royalty. Orange, balance. Brown, tradition, etc. Now, None of those are factual, but many of you may see the colors in a similar way that I do. Overall studies have shown most colors have more positive than negative associations, and that's probably a good thing. But in spite of everything, color psychology is a young field and is thusly viewed by mainstream psychologists as bogus. Critics view it as an exaggeration of what can be justified by research. My question to my fellow intellectuals is this. Is color theory, in terms of psychological effects, bogus? Is color theory merely a fad when referring to fashion, interior design, and art? And what color should I paint my place? I was opting to paint my place a hunter green with brown or white trim. I personally feel that the cool and calmingly traditional earth tones to be welcoming. I think there's some truth in color theory, but as Einstein said, it's all relative. This is Caleb Brees.